Hi everyone. So today I'm here to talk to you about toners. There have been a lot of misconceptions surrounding toners, surrounding glossing and, you know, toners and gloss are two different things. No, they're actually the same thing, just two different names given to them. And so a lot of people look at toners or, or gloss and think it's damaging and thinks it's gonna kill your hair and do all sorts of negative stuff to it. It's not. <laughs> it's actually a color neutralizer and it's also a color that thinks it's a conditioner. It's designed to give your hair some shine. It's designed to neutralize any unwanted tones you have in your hair and give you the overall desired look that you're trying to go for. So let's say for instance, I apply lightener to your hair. Maybe you highlights or on scalp bleaching and you lift to a really brassy, orange, Ronald McDonald kind of look. It happens, especially if you have super, super dark hair, almost black, if not black itself, I'm not gonna get you platinum blonde in one sitting, unless you want your hair sitting on the floor. That's not gonna happen. And so what I would do is find a toner that is within the same level, the same family that you're at. So, if you are like a level one, which is black, naturally or artificially, and you want to go to a level 10, which is the palest, almost platinum blonde, I have to take you there in steps. It's not going to happen in one single sitting. Like I said, let's want your hair on the floor or your hair to feel like straw, you know, like it's not just not going to happen. So that's the kind of thing that happens in stages. And that being said, I would probably get you, if we're lucky, to like a level seven, which is like a dark blonde, light brown. And you would come up brassy, orangey. And so then I would apply a toner that would either counteract the warmth and give you a much cooler looking darker blonde or light brown. Or I would also use a toner to help enhance the warm tones. Because if you're like myself and you like warmth in your hair, well then you're going to have a toner that's going to help enhance the warm tones that you have in your highlights. And so that's what a toner is for, is to help enhance or neutralize unwanted tones. And the reason why so many people think it's damaging is because it's a color, it's a chemical, another one that's going on your head. You know, we are trying to put as little on our hair as possible, but still look and feel our best at the same time. Glosses are generally a demi-permanent color. What that means is that it's not permanent, it's temporary. So the more times you wash your hair, the quicker it's gonna rinse out and the sooner you have to come in to get it refreshed, or if you want to purchase a color depositing conditioner, which I'll do a video on that sometime in the future, then the color depositing conditioner, you can use that about once a month or once a week, depending on how fast your hair is fading and use that to keep your hair color refreshed in between visits to the salon. I actually have a couple of my clients on them and they love them because their hair fades out so quickly because they're washing it so much and it helps save them a little bit of time, a little bit of money. In the long run, if they use these colored positive conditioners and um, to keep their highlights and color fresh. And so the, and also the temperature of the water plays a big role in it too. If your water is too hot, your cuticle in your hair is opening up like a flower. And so all the color molecules that were in your hair are now rinsing out with the hot water because there's nothing there to, to keep them sealed in. The flower's not able to close up, it's staying open. And so all the color molecules that were in your hair before are now rinsing out a lot quicker than you would like them to. One way to keep the color molecules trapped in your hair would be to rinse with cool water to keep your hair solid and shut. You wanna keep the cuticle shut so that the color molecules are trapped in your hair. 
In doing so, you're actually trapping in the moisture to your hair as well. So I know a lot of people don't like, you know, cold showers. I don't like them too much either. They're not my favorite thing in the world, but they do help a lot with keeping the moisture trapped in your skin and trapped in your hair. Because we have a lot of pores on our skin and when they're open, the same thing with our hair cuticle, all the moisture, all the nutrients tend to seep out. So what we want to do is we want to keep them clear, but also want to keep them shut so that they don't open up and allow in all the impurities, all the dirt, and the, in, our, in our case with our hair, our color to seep out quicker than we would like it to. So what I typically tell my clients and what I even do for myself is I will go in and take a hot shower, but I'll pull my hair up and out of the way. So I take my hot shower, rinse my body, do everything else I got to do. And then when it's time for me to wash my hair, I'll turn the knob down to a bit of a cooler temperature. So it's not quite freezing cold, but it's cooler. So it's a little cooler than lukewarm. And I'll shampoo my hair, condition my hair. And so when I get out, my hair is softer. My color isn't fading out as quickly anymore. And I can actually get through my hair easier. So when I go and brush it, I can actually get through my hair and not worry about it knotting and tangling and all the other fun, crazy stuff that's going on with it. So that's something that I really, really like and something I try to promote to my clients. And I've had many of them come back to me and tell me, it's like, hey, that's been like really awesome advice. I have been doing that recently and it's just, my hair feels amazing. It looks amazing. I can work with it easier. And they're also loving the fact that their colors, you know, not fading as quickly anymore. One of my clients, she goes like a violet red. So as we all know, <laughs> red is its own oxymoron. It is hard to get rid of and it's hard to keep. I like call it the, the difficult red wine stain because red wine, as we all know, you can spill it somewhere. And that's it. Whatever it's on, it's on, it's on that forever. It's not going away. And so... It's the same thing with, with red hair dye. And if we want to try and keep a red hair dye lasting in our hair as long as possible, it is the best thing to do to keep it. And to the, the, the best thing to do would be to rinse your hair with cool water. Of course, it helps to have healthy hair from the start. Because if I lighten your hair and your hair wasn't really healthy and strong to begin with, it's only going to do so much. The lightener is going to damage your hair even more and the toner is only going to do so much for you. It's not really going to help repair the hair and it's not really going to help, you know, change it very much if, you know, there's not much there for it to really work with. Because if your hair is so damaged and the cuticle is so frayed and so fried, then the color molecules from the toner have nothing to grab onto. It doesn't matter if the cuticle shut or open, it's not going to grab, it's just going to slip right out. And so what I typically would do is if I see my client's hair is too damaged for a lightning service or even a toner service, I would recommend doing a good trim and then utilizing products that are actually designed to help repair the hair and help make it stronger over time so that eventually the client's hair is healthy enough and is strong enough to be able to withstand another color service. And so for the products I'd like to recommend for that is the Olaplex line or K18 lines. I'll be doing a video on K18 soon. So be aware and be on the lookout for that. But I have done one on Olaplex in the past. If you like that, I'll put the link in down below for you so you can actually take a look at it. It's really good. I've been using it for a few years now and I absolutely love it. It's been one of the best lines that I've used on myself and I've used on my clients. It's awesome. I call it liquid gold. And so if your hair is strong enough to withstand a color service or a lightning service, then I'd say, yeah, go for it. We can do, you know, whatever we think would be deemed 
appropriate for your hair at that point in time. But if your hair is not really qualified, as like to say for a lighting service or color service or what have you, then I would recommend use, using products like Olaplex or K18 to help make it strong enough to help get it repaired to be able to withstand under the color lighting service. Another great factor about the fact that it is temporary is the fact that you can, if, if they can change it up. So if it just so happens that one month you're like, oh, I wanna go copper. And the next month they're like, oh, you know what? Let's go red. You can do that because toner fades out. And when it fades out completely, you get the underlying tone of what the raw lift was. I actually had a client that I did not long ago. She had a split color. So we had one side like dark, dark purple. And the other side we bleached out, did a platinum card on her and I bleached her out completely to like a level 10, 10 11. And then applied like a lighter purple over top of that. And maybe four to six months go by, I guess because of scheduling difficulties. She comes back and all the purple is gone, which is expected, but I was also kind of hoping to see maybe like a little bit of a hint of it still left in her hair. No, it was completely rinsed out and her hair was a beautiful, beautiful platinum blonde. With no hint of purple, no hint of lavender, no hint of anything. And the, uh, that was the raw underlying lift of her hair. And I was just like, well, you know, it looks really pretty as it is, but you still want to go and do like, um, to go back and do the purple again, though we can do that, which, which is what we ended up doing. And it was, so it was just another example of how your raw lift in your hair is going to show through when a toner rinses completely. So a lot of people think, oh, the toner is making my hair brassy, it's making my hair yellow. It's not doing that. What you're seeing is the underlying tone of what the raw lift was in your hair when a toner is completely rinsed out. Because I get the same things. People will look at me and think of my hair as brassy and it's like, it's not brassy. It's not that, double. maybe it is, <laughs> but I put copper tones in my hair. The underlying tone of copper is orange. So over time, I may see that, but I'm not gonna see it right away. And to be honest, I kind of like it. So it doesn't really bother me. And usually by that time, I'm ready for another refresh anyways. So it's really no big deal. But I kind of like seeing the brighter tones in my hair that lean towards a warmer side of the spectrum than the cooler side. What I almost forgot to mention in regards to toners is before toning and after lifting to the raw lift and rinsing out all your lightener is we have pre-tonal shampoos. And I'm gonna try and do a video whole separately on the difference between the purple shampoos and the blue shampoos and how they differ, what each of them are used for because it's a big misconception re regarding those as well. If I see you lift and you have a little bit of yellow in your hair, I will go and grab the purple shampoo and rinse your hair with that. And I'll leave it in for about maybe two to five minutes at most, nothing more than that. And then I'll rinse your hair, see where you're at with your level so I'll towel dry you a little bit, see where you're at with your level, and then I will go and apply the right toner for your hair at that point. Now, if I feel you lifted and you're still a bit on the orange side, I'll go and grab my blue shampoo. I have one from Farmisi, and it's called Goodbye Orange. I had to go look at it for a few moments. So it's called Goodbye Orange and it's highly pigmented blue. It is blue, blue. And so what that will do is help to alleviate any unwanted orange tones in the hair. Cause if we go on the color wheel, yellow counteracts violet and violet counteracts yellow. And blue counteracts orange while orange counteracts blue. So purple will not alleviate orange or brass tones 
it will only alleviate unwanted yellow tones. While blue will not do anything for yellow, but turn it green. Learn that one the hard way. It was very fun. So blue counteracts orange, blue does not counteract yellow, and yellow counteracts violet, or violet counteracts yellow, does not counteract orange. Using these pre-tonal shampoos, I can use them as actual toners. Because sometimes after I use them, I don't even need to use a toner. Sometimes these pre-tonal shampoos and conditioners will actually do everything that's needed for me before even having to apply the toner to your hair, which is great. Saves you money in the end, because I'm not adding a toner to it. And it saves time. It's really, really great for you because it helps to save you time by not adding a toner to your hair. And you don't have to add another chemical to your head. So you can just rinse with the purple or blue shampoo and sometimes just leave it. I have a few of my clients actually that don't, really don't like toners at all for various reasons. And so what I'll do is I'll mix um, the purple shampoo sometimes even with my regular shampoo and do a scrubbing and leave it on for a few minutes and then rinse and that's all that's needed. But what about those clients that have both orange and yellow tones in their hair? Because it does happen. What I will do is, because my blue shampoo is so highly pigmented, I will get my purple shampoo and mix a drop of the blue shampoo into it. And I'll rub both between my hands and then I will rinse the client's hair with that. And then from there, see what else is needed as regarding a toner. Because if I still need a toner afterwards, then I may be better able to formulate in that manner. I do have a toner that is a blue-violet toner. So it does help to counteract both at the same time, which is fantastic. So oftentimes when that happens, that's what I will do help counteract both at the same time because the biggest fear with using a blue shampoo on hair that's been lifted to like a yellow is the fact that it's going to turn it green because blue and yellow make green and that is much harder to formulate for if warmth is not something you want because to counteract green you have to add red and I know a lot of people hear that and they're like, oh my God, I don't want red in my hair. And I'm just like, well, it's not really going to make your hair red. It's just going to add a bit of warmth to the hair to counteract it now that we have green in it. This is why it's important for your stylist to go over all this stuff with you and to understand the nature of what the color wheel is and how it's not your enemy. It's actually your best friend. If your stylist isn't unsure, it's no problem. There's no hate for you to bring out the color wheel in front of your clients. I do that all the time because sometimes I like to use it as educational use for my clients kind of be like hey so you have a better understanding this is what you have in your hair right now this is what's needed to counteract that it will not make your hair that color it's just going to neutralize some of the unwanted tones in your hair to give you a more desired tone of what it is you're looking for and in in that way I get to see for myself because sometimes you know things happen sometimes you don't quite remember like okay what tone counteracts this or what tone counteracts that and this that and the other sometimes you get a little bit confused a little bit nervous and so break out the color wheel look for yourself and then use it as a moment to educate your clients at the same time so it actually helps to build trust it's got some say no they, they don't know not everyone looks at the color wheel not everyone understands how color works not everyone's a painter <laughs> and so by doing this, you're demonstrating that you know what you're talking about. Because you know you do. But you know, sometimes we all forget. Because your clients are going to sit there and question you. And if you feel nervous or scared about something, they're going to sense that. And they're going to know. And so why risk that? Why put that your trust with your client at jeopardy like that. If you don't know how to fix something, first of all, be honest. And two, 
Break up the color wheel. You know what it's gonna do. You know what those colors are there for. It's there to help you. Use it to your advantage. And understand that, you know, there are certain things out there, certain colors out there, that are gonna come in and you're gonna have to, you know, sit there and try to fix them. So I really hope that I was able to quell some of your issues, some of your worries. Um, regarding toner, what it is and what it isn't. So if you have any further questions, feel free to give me a shout out, leave me a message, reach out to me however you can, leave a comment below. But I would definitely love to hear from you. And if there's anything I missed, feel free to let me know. And yeah, so don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a good day.